six months before the holidays, and you can already hear the sound of Thanksgiving. The bees are very important. They know our vines as well as we do. We've got 42 hives of about 50,000 each that we bring in for about six weeks a year. Two million bees at just this one farm will help create America's favorite holiday garnish. As long as it gets pollinated, if it doesn't get pollinated, that little berry will shrivel up and die. One little offshoot can hold half a dozen tiny blooms in progress. Ty Vincent says he expects two or three of those to become cranberries. The petals will fall off and what's left is a little green berry. The berries are gonna be green uh, until they're almost fully sized. Vincent Family Cranberries has 30 acres planted in the dense crimson vines. It's no accident the farm is near Bandon and the beach. Cranberries grow in fields made up mostly of sand. This soil isn't real good for a lot of other types of ag. Cranberries love very acidic soils. Um, they're one of the few plants that do. Most of Oregon's cranberry farms sit scattered for miles along the south coast. They're small operations. Come back six months later in the fall and they're a beehive of another kind of activity. Ty doesn't need a giant combine to harvest. Small crops need small machines. If they're picked dry and handled correctly after that, they'll last a long time. They'll keep very well in the store. You might wonder, where's the water? Well, these berries are going as fresh fruit to stores. They need to be picked dry. It's an expensive, labor-intensive process where the vines can clog the machinery. So Ty only does this with a few fields. One of the biggest myths in the cranberry world is that they grow in watery bogs. A lot of people think they're flooded year-round like rice or something. But no, it grows in a real dry environment in sand. They're only flooded about 48 hours a year. Since they hide in a dense mat of vines several inches thick, the secret to an easier harvest is a two-day flood. Why comb for them when you can take the easy route and bring the berries to you by simply making them float? The bogs are terraced, and so by flooding one bog, we'll be able to reuse that water. It'll just drain the next and the next and so on. This is our bog beater. Knocking the berries off the vine is a pretty gentle way to harvest them. You know, you won't see a John Deere cranberry harvester, unfortunately. Most of these are all handmade here. That one dates back to the late 80s. It's the most efficient way to harvest. It really is. After beating the bog, Ty is left with a shimmering scarlet pond. Most berries will be processed into things like cranberry sauce or pressed into juice or simply dried. Getting these wet won't hurt them since they don't need a long shelf life. It's early November and Ty's still got plenty of time to get his berries in. Oregon's cranberry farmers have one small advantage. On the south coast, they don't have to worry about snow. The nation's biggest growers in Massachusetts or Wisconsin race the early freeze. Their harvest will be over about the time we start. We're the last cranberry grower still harvesting in the U.S. Almost half of the South Coast berries go right down the road to the ocean spray plant. Here they get collected, sorted, and cleaned. Oregon's a small player in the cranberry game. Just 4% of the nation's nearly 7 million barrels of cranberry come from here. But thanks to that long growing season, Oregon growers make a bold boast. They say these berries are the sweetest. We're the Napa Valley of cranberries. And you know, it's true, we do grow a better cranberry. We don't grow as many, um, but they are a better cranberry. These are uh, about as ripe as you can get. You can really see the brown seeds in here and the red bleeding through from the skin. And then you eat them, and they're good. Scientists can measure the sweetness of berries. It's called bricks. Bricks is the sugar solids in the berry. Our bricks is usually uh, averages a 9.5 um, in the Midwest, they usually average about a point behind that. Bob Donaldson is chairman of the Oregon Cranberry Growers Association. So I've had these plots in for three years. 
He's also testing some new varieties of cranberry. There's 36 varieties with two plots of each variety. You see, Oregon's kind of stuck in a cranberry rut. Growers here still mostly grow one kind of berry bred back in the 1950s, the Stevens. It is a long time, and Stevens is a, is a very good production berry, and they're hard to beat, but I, I'm hoping that, that some of these varieties out here will do a little bit better than Stevens. Bob shows us just how different cranberries can look. Oregon's favorite jumps out bright red compared to a new, darker, and bigger variety called Crimson Queen. If we say that we have better color and better sugar, and if there is a, a variety out there that has better color and better sugar genetically, well, shouldn't we be growing it? Shouldn't we be looking for that, that variety that's going to, to best suit uh, Oregon? Growers don't want vines that just produce lots of sweet berries. They also need them to wrestle out the weeds. We have a few more weeds probably than other cranberry growers. You've got to grow a few weeds. Um, we, we, you will see farms that are weed free and to me they're probably using more herbicides than, than we are. Ty Vincent says he would love to take his farm organic and avoid weed killers altogether. The odds are not in his favor. In Oregon, only one cranberry farm has managed to stay organic after several years. Come harvest time, farmers get creative. Simple tools, like leaf blowers, work best for herding wayward berries. This black boom is called cran barrier, and it's, uh, it's a converted oil containment boom, actually. Cranberries may be the only crop that swims out of the field and then takes an elevator to market. This elevator here is taking most of the leaves and grass out as we go. They've had a couple of years of lousy prices for cranberries. But when the soil's so sandy and few other crops will survive, 175 small Oregon cranberry farms offer thanks for what they can grow. I'm optimistic. I think farmers have to be. Um, that's the only way you can really continue in this business. We do grow amazing cranberries, the best in the world here in Oregon. They are bar none the best, and we're proud to say that.